Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is Guinness. And yes, it is St. Patrick's Day. It is St. Patrick's Month weekend. Whenever you're catching this video or whenever you are listening to the audio version on my podcast slash radio show, it is around St. Patrick's Day and the festivities are abound. So today's mission is going to talk about the corruption of these massive conglomerate brands and how to vote with your wallet, how to make a better decision. So first off, Guinness is not independently owned. Guinness is owned by a company called Diageo, and Diageo is a massive, massive player in the game. They own over 200 brands of beer and spirits and even wine, including brands like Moet Hennessy, Moet Chandon, um, Fouve Clicquot. Uh, it, is, it is massive. Their annual sales, um, annual sales here are, let's see, I'm looking it up here, almost 14 a billion pounds, or a British company, 14 billion pounds. That's how massive of a player they are in the game. So what they're known for is they're known for going in and buying brands. They go in and buy brands, they shut down the main production facility, or they keep it up as sort of like, you know, as a little like museum, sort of like like Guinness. If you go to the Guinness factory, it's it's basically a show. They don't they don't they don't really produce um, the mass volume there. It's like when Budweiser bought Goose Island. They took their flagship beer, their number one selling beer, and they took it out of the production of Goose Island and they shipped it off to their one of their main facilities. That's what these people do. These companies, these corporate, these greedy corporations, they go in, they start dismantling the company, whether it's taking one line out of the one production out of the line or totally shutting the plant down. Now, Diageo did that with Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker's plants closed, plant closed, I think in 2009, maybe 2010. They had bought Johnny Walker, 700 employees in a small Scottish town lost their job because. It's all about profits. It's all about taking that product, shipping it to a central central production facility where they can make it faster, they can make it with less uh, less employees, less overhead, and better distribution. So their costs drastically can drop down on this same price. But the problem is in the stores, you don't you don't feel that reflection in the price change. It's not you, you don't feel it at all. In fact, sometimes the price goes up. Because these companies don't care about any of that. It's all about how can they maximize profits and maximize profits and forget about the environment, forget about em employees, forget about communities. It's nothing like that. Now, on top of that being their, their main mission when they buy companies, Diageo, the parent corporation, is a member of ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council. And they've been around for a couple decades, ALEC. And I got to tell you, ALEC is the worst of the worst. They are... They are lobbyists on steroids. They're really not even lobbyists. What they do is they directly pay, they directly bribe your state senators, your state elected officials. They go in, they bribe them, they offer them packages, send them on vacation, give them cash, give their kids jobs, give them college tuition for their kids. They go in and they go right after them with the money and they say, here, we need this law passed. Well, these are all special interest laws. Every single law they pass are special interest laws. So, for example, a lot of states it's a, they, it's illegal to uh, to videotape livestock, uh, especially in processing plants. That's because these big companies don't want you to see what's happening with your food, else you wouldn't eat your food. Because when you see what's happening, it's gross, it's disgusting, it's pathetic, it's immoral. So they don't they want to hide that from you. Same thing with 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 uh, police officers. You're not allowed to sh to uh, to videotape police officers without their approval in several states. That's because they're taking our right away um, uh, across the board. There's dangerous, dangerous Alec laws in California. They passed a law for Gardasil that your daughter now can get the Gardasil vaccine, 10, 11 years old, 12 years old, without parental consent. That is insane. I'm not saying don't vaccinate i personally have a, a different view on vaccinations i'm not i'm not this isn't the point of that view the point is if you send your daughter to school at 11 12 years old and the nurse says something to her this and that, the doctor says something to her and she can take the shot without asking you that is insane 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 but of course now guess who benefits from it 
Gardasil benefits from because it's going to increase their sales. Okay, um, they've they've <laughs> Alec in so many states over thirty states they have directly um, kept minimum wages down because the big companies don't want to pay people more money. They want these cheap corporate jobs, these cheap line 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 jobs like in factory uh, factory farms, especially in processing plants. Energy standards, green energy standards keep getting shot down. That's because the big companies, the big power companies don't want to have to have to compete with solar energy, with wind energy, with photovoltaic, with any of that. I mean, in Florida, at one point, I'm not sure if it's still this way, but in Florida, it was insane the amount of taxes you had to pay to put solar panels on your house. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You could not afford to do it. The technology was there, you could buy it, but the taxes were insane when they should be the opposite. And the states should be saying, here are tax breaks for it. In New York, there's tax breaks. Here's tax breaks, let's go green, let's do this, let's do that. Um, I mean, so the laws go on and on and on. And every time that you give these corporations money, you encourage this. They're stripping our rights as Americans. They don't care about jobs. They don't care about the environment. They don't care about you. I, I, I know, because I've been in this business so long, I know a lot of people who used to, or several people that have worked for Diageo. Um, and I gotta tell you, every single person, them, even the people that work for Diageo now, tell you, this is not a fair company. They don't play fair in the sandbox. They, 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 they're ruthless. They go after other companies. They go in, they go in for sales. Now Guinness, years ago, the Guinness rep came in. Oh, we can set you up the Guinness line and this and that. I wasn't gonna do it, but they, they were like trying to sell me. So I'm like, well, okay. So talk, talk about what you can do. For every five kegs I bought, they were gonna give me one free keg. Guinness Blonde, when Guinness Blonde was launched, you buy two kegs, you get one keg free here in New York, which by the way is totally illegal. It's against ABC regulations, ABC standards, liquor control board, totally against that. But they were doing it. They were going with these sales shops and say, here you go, here you go. And they'd cut your brakes and, and, and you know, deliver you stuff on the back end without an invoice. The small breweries can't afford to give away products like that. But when you have 13 billion pounds in revenue, which I don't know how much it is, probably like $18 billion, $20 billion, something like that, probably closer to $20 billion. Um, let's actually ask Surrey what that is. Uh, 13 billion pounds equals how many American dollars? Checking my sources. Checking your okay. sources. I found this on the web for what that is. 13 billion pounds equals how many American dollars? Uh, she didn't give me a direct answer, so that didn't work. <laughs> so it's it's and every time you give these companies, every time you buy buy their drinks, every time you buy their products, you're encouraging a system. It's like voting for it's like voting for a presidential candidate. Every time you vote for them, you encourage them. You vote for these psychopaths, you encourage them. You vote whoever you vote for, you're encouraging their actions. But when you take your wallet out, you're voting. But that's a more powerful vote. Because we can all stop voting for these companies, we can all stop buying from these companies. You take their money, you take their power. You take their money, take their power, they stop influencing laws, they stop influencing elected officials, they stop this whole money game, it's ridiculous. But most people think, oh, you know, it's a Guinness, it's St. Patrick's Day. I gotta tell you, there's so many other independent stouts and porters that you can drink. Guinness, first of all, Guinness is, is an okay beer. It's an okay beer. It's not. It's not nothing phenomenal. There are a ton of phenomenal small crafted beers. Probably in every single state you can get something. There's 4,000 breweries across America now. In 1980, there were 40 breweries. Now there's 4,000 breweries. You don't need to buy big brands of beer, big brands of spirits, big brands of wine. That that game is over. You don't need to do that at all to have a successful business. Now, could I be selling Guinness today? Today is St. Patrick's Day, by the way, when I'm recording this. I could be selling St. Uh, Guinness right now and probably be, have a lot more people in my door. I could be selling green margaritas. I could be selling green this, green that with food coloring. I could be selling cheap corned beef. I could be doing anything, that kind of stuff. And I would be busier. But for me, it's honestly not about compromising my values, my ethics, or my rights as an American to give these companies money and keep encouraging their behavior. Every time you give them money, you encourage their behavior. You give them another dollar that they can allocate towards politicians, toward unfair marketing, towards going after smaller breweries, taking tap lines, because that's really what's happening. When they were, if they were to come into me years ago and if that worked, it would have been taking a tap line away from a small independent brewery that, that I would 
that I would be supporting. That's what that is, and they don't care. They want the tap line. They want the space. They want that right then and there, and that's what they want. So think next time before you drink. Think before you drink. Sounds like a good website, thinkbeforeyoudrink.com. Um, I don't own that. I don't even know if that's a website. It probably is about, maybe about drunk driving. But, you know, ask for independent when you go to a restaurant. Ask for something that's truly independently produced and know where your dollar is going and don't play their games. It's nonsense. Don't put up with it. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.